RMC is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com. Level up your retro gaming with their joysticks featuring genuine Sanwar arcade parts. And OneClickPrint.com for your photos on canvas, acrylic, gifts and more. Local craftsmen and global delivery. Hello cave dwellers, welcome to the cave for the final part of our Amstrad Mega PC restoration. I have to be honest, I didn't expect this part to happen, I thought we'd have it all wrapped up in three parts, but the more we scratched the surface, the more I wanted to do on this machine. But we're at a good place now, I think I'm happy with how it is, thanks to a few finishing touches that were helped by Howard from Dubious Engineering here. Here is Howard with his 3D printer, and he helped me to design an ISA backplate into which we mounted the fan controller, so that's now easily accessible. And I would have loved to have made the compact flash guard accessible, but we couldn't quite get the design working for that. But instead we have the battery mounted there nicely. And we added a socket for the battery, so I know some of you had concerns in previous episodes that I might plug the battery in the wrong way round. Well now that's not possible, it can only be plugged in the right way on this socket. So thank you for your suggestions and feedback to help us make this better than it otherwise would have been. Now for testing, we need to talk about the monitor quickly. This is the original multi-sync monitor. It switches between 31 and 15 kilohertz, and it's on loan. So I've had to find an alternative. And to get around that problem, I've used this. This is the OSSC, or Open Source Scan Converter. It's a line doubler, a very rapid one at that. And it means that we can use a regular CRT monitor. Uh, in fact, it outputs through HDMI, but through the use of an HDMI to VGA dongle, we can use a regular 31 kilohertz VGA monitor, yeah, it works great. This is the second CRT I tried. The first one I tried would go blank for a few seconds every now and then. It was very annoying and I thought, okay, it's not gonna work. But when I tried the Packard Bell CRT instead, that's been rock solid. And of course, a flat screen is an option, either with VGA or, or HDMI or DVI. There's lots of options, lots of ways that you can use the Mega PC despite its need for a multi-sync monitor. And one last thing before we get stuck into using the machine, I did promise you some upgrades just because, well, because we could, to see if it makes any difference. The first being this, this is a maths coprocessor, a 387 maths coprocessor to complement the 386 CPU. And I also threw in as much video RAM as I could squeeze in there, taking us from 256 to 512 kilobytes of video RAM. So our Mega PC is fully loaded, ready for action. And I promise you, I'm not gonna skim over any frustrations or annoyances We'll take an objective look at this, despite all of the hours that I've put into refurbishing it. We'll try and make it a realistic overview. So, are you ready for some gaming, Alan? Ah! We're not really that kind of channel, Alan. Just take it easy. This is my game face, Neil. I'm gonna f destroy you. So with our Mega PC finally set up and ready, it was time to install some games. Gunship 2000 in this case, which is a great way to feel like you're in an episode of Airwolf, and it's filled with big box flight sim goodies like this keyboard overlay. I really miss the event that was opening and playing a big box PC game. Anyway, we'll pop the discs in to install our attack helicopter, and I heard you like games with your games. So while that's installing from floppy disk, we can switch our Mega PC over to Mega Drive mode, in which I'm using an EverDrive cartridge. We can plug in our gamepad, and then we can have a quick blast of Sonic 2, which looks great on both our CRT and LCD. I have the image split so you can see both options. And here too is a direct capture so you can see just how lovely that picture quality is coming directly out of our Mega PC. And yes, this is a power machine, so I'm sure our friends in NTSC regions are shouting at their screens right now about how slow Sonic looks. Well, our kettles boil faster, so who's laughing now? Flicking between the Mega Drive and the PC never gets old on this machine, but there is a small change which could have made it a whole lot better. 
pulling out the cartridge to switch back to the PC and you'll remember there's a little switch which detects if the cartridge is in, so when we pull it out it powers off the Mega Drive card. Don't worry, we don't need to power the system off first. But here's my complaint, if we try to slide the panel across for PC mode, our joypad is in the way and we need to unplug it. And I can't help but think that, aside from being annoying, it'll also put unnecessary stress on the port, needing to unplug and plug it infrequently. The joypad ports really should have been on the back or on the side of the machine. There is a solution though, if this really bothers you, you can just pop the front panel off, like this, allowing you to keep your joypad plugged in at all times. And then here's the switch which switches you between the two modes, so if you wanted to, you could even 3D print a little hat to finish that off and store the front panel somewhere safe. It's certainly an option. After some Sonic, our gunship is ready to take off, so we went for a little fly. This is a game from 1991, and with the detail turned down a little bit, it's perfectly playable on our Mega PC, and it gives you an idea of the 3D performance of our 386. It's not silky smooth, but I would have certainly enjoyed this performance back in the day. It also gives me a chance to try out the bundled Amstrad AJ5 analog joystick. Look at this little beast, clearly not modelled on any fighter jet that I know of. Power, this is Ghost Rider requesting a flyby. Negative, Alan, the pattern is full, the pattern is full. Our way to the danger zone. Let's take a quick look then at some benchmarking, and if you need to benchmark your 386 then the quickest way to go about getting some tools is thanks to Phil's computer lab. He's put together a 386 benchmarking pack and there's a link to download that from Phil in the description, and of course you should check out his fantastic YouTube channel. In the pack we find various tools like this, this is the Superscape 3D benchmark, and that's putting our machine through its paces with some 3D rendering. And we've also got Top Bench, which I've already run on the stock Mega PC, which is on loan. If I run it on our slightly upgraded Mega PC, then we have some results to compare. Our upgraded Mega PC reports a 10% performance increase over the stock one, with a Top Bench score of 53 compared to the stock score of 48. It's not without anomalies though, it detects the stock correctly as having a 25 MHz CPU, but it detects ours as having a 33 MHz CPU. So I'm not quite sure why there's a discrepancy there, this is sold as a 25 MHz PC. Both tests were carried out using the compact flash adapter, so there should be no difference in the disk speeds to skew the results. Our next benchmark, System Speed Test, detects correctly that we have a 25 MHz CPU, but says it's running at 34 MHz, and it says we have a 287 Maths coprocessor running at 60 MHz. This is definitely a 387 coprocessor, so there are some oddities here, but it is very definitely detecting that coprocessor. A Maths coprocessor introduces a range of new instructions and registers designed specifically to calculate floating point computations, effectively removing the penalty you suffer from using them with the 386 CPU alone, which is geared towards integer calculations. The later 486DX range of processors, Pentiums and beyond, all had Maths coprocessors built into them, but before that it was an optional extra, and we all know what happens when something isn't standard. Yes, programmers aim for the lowest common denominator to make the most sales. So to find software for R386 that specifically shows off a Maths coprocessor is quite a difficult task. We're talking CAD packages like AutoCAD, spreadsheets like Lotus123, and databases and mathematical or statistical packages. Checking my shelves, the only thing I could find that supports a maths coprocessor is this. It's Falcon 3, a hardcore flight sim from the period, and it says that by having a maths coprocessor we can enable a high fidelity option which offers an actual flight model developed for Air Force training. Buying a maths coprocessor to enable floating point calculations for a more accurate flight simulation model. Not right now, thank you. I've got apples to collect. Gaming on the Mega Drive is an absolute joy on this machine. Granted, I couldn't have recommended it with a £999 price tag on release, and I can't really recommend you get one today just for Mega Drive gaming. They command several hundred pounds in decent shape, but it's probably the best picture I've ever seen come out of Mega Drive hardware. There is one flaw though, and that's with the original monitor, which I'll plug in now to demonstrate. 
The Amstrad monitor does offer a lovely rich picture, much better in fact than my own CRT, but if you cast your eye to the edge of the screen it all gets a little bit strange. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about here at both the left and right extremities where it starts to warp. It's almost as if the image wraps around back on itself. Here's a more prominent example in Ghouls and Ghosts, and some of you spotted this in episode 2 and commented on the fact. On my display on the right it's not an issue, perhaps because it's through the OSSC, or perhaps because I don't have horizontal width control on this monitor to fill it all the way to the edge of the screen, but a direct capture from the machine clears things up. There's no such warping on the output, so I think we can conclude that that effect is caused by Alan's cheap monitor. Affordable, not cheap. What's the difference then, Alan? About 40% more profit for me. <laughs> is it any wonder you're no longer in business? <laughs> Speaking of business, let's get back to the PC side of our machine. We can, of course, run Windows on this. I've opted for Windows 3.11, and I've installed the Windows drivers for the video adapter, which, as you can see, have detected the upgraded 512K of video RAM. What does that offer? Well, quite simply, more video memory means more colours at a high resolution than the stock system. But taking the resolution to anything beyond 640x480 on my monitor, well, it takes us into migraine refresh rate territory. So I think this is an upgrade that benefits the LCD screen rather than the CRT. And if we take it up to 800x600, now you can see that it looks great on the LCD, even if it doesn't improve my Minesweeper skills. The conclusion then to our hardware upgrades today is that just because you can, doesn't necessarily mean that you should. It's fun to have these in here, and to say that I've expanded the Mega PC to something that would have been pretty beefy back in the day, but remember it was already a pretty dated machine on release. Perhaps we should just accept it for what it is. It's not your fault, mate. It's not my fault either. No refunds. Now Amstrad being Amstrad, they always had to do something different, and with the Mega PC, it was the bundled Counterpoint software, which is on this disc. It's a nice idea. Counterpoint has a very simple GUI that lets you link DOS programs to icons and keep them organised. It's really just a launchpad into which you can arrange those icons, it's no more complex than that. When you create an icon, it's no different to making a DOS batch file, you type in the commands and link them to the icon. And then it will launch the program. In this example, I've made an icon for our Gunship 2000 game, and it dutifully launches when we click on it, returning us to Counterpoint when we quit. To further customise your Amstrad, you can then use the built-in icon editor to make a custom icon in Counterpoint. And of course, no schoolchild would ever think of using that to draw rude pictures, I'm sure. There are no mistakes when doing art, Neil. Only happy little accidents. I take it back. That's a very unhappy looking accident indeed. After extended use of the machine, I came to realise that there's this odd hybrid niche that it fills beautifully. That's the combo of Sega Mega Drive for arcade classics, of course, and on the PC side it runs all the Sierra and LucasArts point and click adventures I've thrown at it beautifully, as well as some dungeon crawlers and Ultima 6. What the Amstrad Mega PC became for me is not an early 90s 3D flight sim powerhouse with its maths coprocessor, which is sort of what I had in mind, but a lovely machine to sit down at with a cup of coffee and patiently play a nice adventure game. Taking periodic breaks for a blast on Shaq Fu while you think about how to solve the next clue. It's a patient gamer's machine from an era where we could sit down and focus on that single adventure game and not be distracted by our phones or social media, but it suits our modern minds because we absolutely can fry our brains with some blast processing when our attention span runs out. So despite all its underpowered flaws for the time, this actually suits me just perfectly for a spot of retro gaming. So that wraps up our Mega PC restoration. I hope you've enjoyed the process. I hope you enjoyed seeing it in action today. And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Do leave a comment. Do let me know what you'd like to see running on it uh, and whether you'd like one. Is this a hybrid too far or is this a machine that you'd like to have in your collection? Let me know. I'd like to say a special thank you to Andy, who very kindly sold me this machine. He approached me and offered it to me. So I really do appreciate that opportunity. Thank you, Andy. And I hope you personally like what we've done to it because it was caught just in the nick of time when it arrived with that leak. So I hope I've done you proud, Andy. I'm heading up to the loft now to pick out something for the next Trash to Treasure series. Until then, thank you for watching. See you next time.